Hey guys, it's G. Today we're working on this commission piece um, with fluorescent paints. And if you're unfamiliar with fluorescent paints, or you may have heard them referred to as UV paints or black light paints, um, they are really high chroma colors that react to ultraviolet radiation. Um, ultraviolet radiation, by the way, not a harmful term, it's just the energy given off by a black light or a UV source of light. And one thing to note about these colors is they actually shift under the black light. So if you see what I have put down on the canvas, I have a magenta, an orange, a yellow, and a green. Um, that magenta, for example, turns into a hot red, whereas the yellow, um, this is you know the same shade of yellow that you'd get in a highlighter, that turns into a very bright green under the black light. So this is one of these things to keep in mind when you're um, choosing your colors. Um, and here's the recipe. So the base is about three to one float roll. It's uh, on the runnier side. And then these colors. So I'll, I'll show you a picture of um, these uh, UV paints. They're actually quite cheap uh, compared to paints in Egypt. Uh, they're locally manufactured and it doesn't really say a whole lot about it but you know from opening the packaging and sort of smelling it it smells more like latex paint than it does acrylic and one of the tests that i like to do when i um, i'm trying new paints is i make a little blob and let it dry and see if it cracks acrylic paint will not crack uh, house paint or latex paint will crack more often than not i'm going to be using the fluid art co number 15 swipe tool that's because it has a curve and that makes it really good for the spiral swipe um, type uh, compositions. Um, all my paints are at the consistency of two parts paint to one part float roll, but I'm not using float roll as a medium here. Um, this is because float roll, the binder situation in float roll isn't particularly good. Uh, and these are really, um, budget friendly paints if you will so i'm using my local varnish here because its binding properties are much stronger um, if you're in this type of situation i imagine glue all would be the second best um, but i just felt varnish would be the safer option here um, so the consistency is two parts float roll to one part um, paint i'm just not using float roll i'm using a different medium the same is true for the swipe color uh, the swipe color is um, the turquoise green from uh, Art Creations. That's also at the same consistency, also with varnish, but it has a couple drops of um, silicone oil in it. So if you're using float roll in this recipe, the whole canvas will be covered in cells right now. But as is the case with glue and with varnish, um, the ones that are binder fluids or pouring mediums as opposed to paint conditioners, um, they require some heat to bring the cells to the surface. Um, whereas float roll, because it's a paint conditioner, it allows the paints to move very easily. And subsequently, so do the cells. They also move very easily to the surface. So what I want to do before I torch and bring a lot of these cells to the surface is sort of spin this, um, to expand the pattern. I'm trying to do this very slowly. Um, this is a 50 by 50 canvas. And as you know, I often recommend the 12 inch spinner. Uh, when I say 50 by 50, I mean 50 by 50 centimeters. That's about 20 inches. Um, and to prop it up properly, I put under uh, the canvas that I'm painting on, I put a 40 by 40 canvas upside down. Okay, I tried to center it on the canvas on my little silicone mat. And then in a diamond shape over it, um, because it won't actually sit comfortably if you stack them neatly square over square. As you can see here, um, this allows the bigger canvas to sit on the back of the smaller canvas relatively well. And believe it or not, I didn't actually get the front of the canvas uh, dirty, just the back. The, the back is a mess, but that's fine. It's one of my scrap canvases. So now as we apply heat, you can see the silicone jumps to the surface. Um, the paints are on the thicker side, so they, they, they do take a, you know, um, a few seconds when you spot heat them. I like to keep my torch on the lowest setting so I can get really up close um, without the danger of fumes or um, forming skin on the paint. And there we go. I think that looks pretty good. I'm just going to scrape um, the edges 
uh, prevent the drip from dragging the paint out further while the painting dries. And now we can go grab our black light and show this off. So I'm just turning down my studio lights, check it out. You see the color shift that I had mentioned? The magenta turns red, the yellow turns green. And yeah, with a black light, these things really, really pop. So yeah, thanks for watching. This was G, and I'll see you in the next video.